What always struck out to me with Green Arrow is that he has a lot of great or at least good runs. There weren't all home runs, of course, but the consistency the Bowman provided was nice. He's a social justice warrior before the losers on the internet took that word and made it as a weapon against people. But anyway, his mission in life was to help people and use his wealth to do so, on top of shooting a bow, of course. It was all good stuff, and the New 52 starting point for a lot of characters varied, but it worked out well for some heavy hitters like Aquaman, Batman, Wonder Woman. But, like I talked about with New 52 Superman failing, Green Arrow, sadly, wasn't that far behind, at least at the start. Let me start by saying I'm a huge fan of Green Arrow. I like a lot of his runs from Kevin Smith to Mike Grell. Grell? Is it Grell or Grill? I think it's Grill. But Mike Grell, Kevin Smith, Judd Winnick, and so on. So for me, he is a pretty great hero. He was presented as kind of like this playboy, but unlike Mr. Wayne, he wasn't always so down. This isn't to say that he didn't deal with some harsh or heavy storylines, because oh boy, did he in the Grell era, a mature rated Green Arrow that ran for years. But he also dealt with a lot of great storylines that balanced that darkness of humanity while still giving us hope and cheering with his somehow obnoxious but fun charm that Green Arrow Oliver can only give us. So what did New 52 do so bad that it nearly killed the entire character for me? Well, for nearly the first two years of Green Arrow's life in the lineup for New 52, he was written and he was drawn unlike anything I read prior years to this. The first arc is written by Jurgen, who I normally like most of his stuff, or at least some of it, but he misses the mark here pretty much completely. First off, the new 52 characters all got reverted back in age. Even Batman got a bit younger, but I can't think of anyone who felt as de-aged, I guess, as Green Arrow. Being more hip, young, and fresh, Green Arrow went back in like a time machine or some, taking him like to his early 20s, if, uh, from when he was a, you know, late 30s, 40s hero to just being a kid basically again, and uh, not a fan of that. Now, I'm not going to hate everything about this run. To my surprise, I actually did enjoy things about it. Um, I thought the suit redesign where it was almost sleeveless was pretty cool. I didn't even mind the goatee going away, which I know is signature for Green Arrow, but we're getting a younger one, right? And I, I actually didn't mind them taking away for this Green Arrow. And an idea to build a team, which was obviously synergy from the TV show Arrow, which was becoming a hit at the time, is a smart idea. And I'll even be honest, the first story arc isn't horrible, it's just boring. Facing off against reality TV bad guys, I mean, come on, what a weird idea. And not that Green Arrow has always had great villains, but he does have better than this. This was particularly shitty. But listen, if that's the worst that came from it, I would have let it go. It had a boring start, you know? But uh, writers and artists changed after six issues, and oh my god. Listen. I can hardly draw a stick figure, so I am the last person to really focus on art. But man, oh man, what the fuck happened here? I can hardly understand what is happening during the action scenes in this next arc. Everyone's eyes look buggy as hell, like they're on drugs or something. It almost looks like their bodies are deformed when they're in action. I, I don't know, I just don't understand what happened here. No one looks like regular people. Um, but listen, putting the art aside, because like I said, I'm not an artist. The storytelling, the triple threat is the start of this, and I don't even know what was happening. I, I honestly don't know what we were thinking here. It's the over-the-top, provocative storyline from whom I consider one of the more interesting writers on Daredevil back in the day, but this is just full-blown, no-restraint storytelling, both ugly and nasty. But guess what? It keeps up the energy after that. Dealing with a storyline about a girl trying to commit suicide in the beginning, which could be a cool idea for Oliver to tackle. Instead, she announces she's some type of robot, in which case, what? And then Oliver goes and tries to find out how this could happen, which eventually leads to finding out, like, a, a robot deal. Like, uh, And then she just runs off at the end of the arc. So what was the point of this arc? I don't know. I, I don't know. That's my problem. And see, this goes on for 10 issues. 
10 issues in comic world is like 10 months of this shit. So nearly a year of suffering through this garbage. And what I described above is only the first 10 issues. It's still stupid. It's still stupid because then they bring in savage goddamn Hawkman. And listen, if you don't know me by now, I hate Hawkman. And he just makes it worse, even worse than it already is. And it's pretty damn bad. Okay, so listen, I'm understanding. There's bad runs here or there. I love Daredevil, but we also have Shadowland. So, you know, I'm used to that. But when such major characters like Green Arrow, who have ran nearly 20 years, uh, uh, you know, even the revival when Kevin Smith, that lasted over 10 years before this came along, it was mostly pretty good. So I think this is what makes me so upset is New 52 was like the big push to get new readers on board. We could have got a, a fantastic Green Arrow and multiple runs prior to this for 10 years were so good from different writers and artists. So it wasn't that they switched the teams. It's that they picked the wrong people for this character and the wrong forward thinking for someone like Oliver, de-aging him to this point, giving him really stupid villains, making him even more of a playboy than he has to be. Things like this just not work for the character in his favor. But listen... There is a silver lining through all this garbage. After nearly two years of that hot garbage, a certain indie writer at the time, who is now a huge writer, was about to change everything. And he was about to bring Green Arrow in a new light, in a new way, with a fantastic artist with him. And that man was Jeff Lemire. 